going on car family I'm Ben Wayne thank you for joining me in another video today we're checking out the 2022 Kia Stinger GT2 trim level so this one is going to be around $52,000 the base price for the Stinger is around $36,000 or so and it's going after some of the German competitors for example like the BMW 3 Series everybody's familiar with that car I'm sure so let's talk Stinger in general Kia introduced us to the Stinger back in around 2018 or so. And I think that is when Kia decided as a brand that we're going to change our image a little bit and show people we're going to go after um, a little bit of luxury and performance as well. So design-wise, in my opinion, this is the first vehicle in the modern era of Kia. A lot of people are talking about getting Kias nowadays. A lot of people are talking about Kias, period. And 10 years ago, Let's just be honest, that was not the case. So in comes the Kia Stinger with original looks. It looks like nothing else on the street at that time. And it was really attention grabbing. So when you saw one, people were like, well, who made that car? And you would tell people, oh, it's Kia. And people couldn't believe it because they were familiar with the older Kia small sedans that were a little too plasticky and lacked on performance and definitely lacked in the looks department. So fast forward to 2022, we are in the refreshed Kia Stinger. This one is done in a very vibrant red and features a black leather interior, high quality leather in the cabin of this Stinger as well. So let's start off with the exterior details. From the front, what we're getting for 2022 are revised daytime running lamps and revised headlamps in general as well, all LED of course. So that's nice. And then of course you're getting the traditional grill that we've come to know and love on the Stinger. It really looks unique from the front. Now, there are a couple of fake vents up front, which is, you know, typical. You kind of get that with cars like this, but the performance is there. Underneath the hood, you're getting a 3.3 liter twin turbocharged V6 that puts out 368 horsepower and 371 pound-feet of torque at just 1300 RPM. So the get up and go factor is serious in this car. You're hitting zero to 60 in about 4.6 seconds, right? So that engine is mated to an eight speed automatic transmission, which seems to be fairly responsive and brings the car to speed at a very smooth rate. I'll go ahead and floor it now. And it's just smooth acceleration. It doesn't jerk me too much. So I really like that about this car. A lot of cars in this range tend to be a little bit jerky because the transmission doesn't seem to be synced up well with the car. That's not the case in this Stinger. Now, going back to the front, with the appearance factor, I noticed that there are two fake hood vents. Wow, this car just really accelerates. <laughs> so I noticed there are two fake heat extractors on the hood. I like the way they look, but I kind of wish that they were functional. You know, it's stuff like that. You know, that's a minor gripe. Some people probably won't even notice that when shopping for this car. Your fuel economy, you're looking at about 18 city, 25 highways. So the fuel economy isn't bad at all. Um, that's a huge talking point in today's climate. Currently at my local gas station, we're paying 430 per gallon for a regular unleaded. So 18 city, 25 highway, that's not bad for the performance that you're getting. And again, that zero to 60 time is in the mid four second range. So that's nice as well. Now, coming over to the side profile, you have dark chrome accents along the top roof line that match the dark chrome accents that you'll see around the grill of the car as well. So I really like how they tied that in. The dark chrome looks really nice and kind of sets off that roof line in my opinion. Now this car is fitted with 19 inch wheels and hidden behind those 19 inch wheels are Brembo brakes. Four piston up front, two piston in the rear and they clamp down on those discs and bring this car to a stop relatively quickly so you can really drive this thing with a nice sense of confidence. Now, one thing I noticed about the side profile is that it looks like a relatively long car. I don't know if the lines are playing tricks on me. The length of this car is about 100 
and 90.2 inches. So take that um, as you will. I think it's a nice size sedan and the lines don't look rushed because there was enough space for the designers to play with the line. So it tapers nicely into the rear hatch or trunk lid. So it doesn't look too cartoonish or rushed like other cars in this segment might be. I think the proportions are just nice. I also like the dark chrome mirrors. I really love the dark chrome mirrors. It really just brings a nice sinister look to it. Subtle hints like that kind of edge you to what this car is about. So the chrome accents for the roof line, the dark chrome accents for the side view mirrors, and the dark chrome accents for the front grille all tie in really nicely. Let me drop this into sport mode and use the paddles. So I'm in second gear now, and we're just gonna go ahead and mash on the throttle. So it picks up there, just a little bit of turbo lag. Oh, those brakes feel good. Nice and responsive on the brakes there. Let me drop it down to first gear and try that. Experience just a hint of turbo lag there. There it goes, it's alive now. That acceleration is really smooth in this car. I like that. Just a hint of turbo lag once I mash my foot down on that accelerator, but then it wakes right up and just starts pulling and pulling and pulling. So the top end of this car is about 168 miles per hour or so. You know, the buyer who's looking at this car doesn't really care about the top end speed, but I have to mention it. What people care about is that acceleration factor. How quickly can it get up and go and how quickly can it stop? That's what makes a car fun. It's not really about top end speeds all the time. Coming towards the rear, you'll notice that the roof line tapers nice and slowly into that rear hatch, brings it all together very well. And I love the badging on the back, how it just says Stinger and that nice font. That looks really nice. You also have an LED light band going across, helping pronounce the width of the vehicle as well. Now underneath that hatch, you're getting 23 cubic feet of storage capacity. That's with the rear seats up. So this car is extremely practical. I think that's a decent amount of storage for a vehicle of this proportion. Now you do have black accents on the rear as well. And I love the quad exhaust setup on the rear. So you have the dual exhaust finishers on each side, give it a nice wide and pronounced and aggressive look. So it kind of has a look of elegance and sportiness to it which makes for a rather nice combination in my opinion. I think this looks like a really nice vehicle. In the time that I've had it, I've had people ask me what type of car this is, and they still can't believe that this is a Kia. I mean, that just goes to show you how Kia has made a significant effort and just trying to rebrand themselves and reestablish themselves in terms of the quality of product that they put out. This is an extremely nice looking car in my opinion and you're getting it with an unbeatable warranty a 10 year 100,000 mile powertrain warranty which some of the german competition or i would say all of the german competition quite frankly they don't offer that so talking about the interior a little bit you're getting this high quality leather interior this is really nice so nice smooth leather on a lot of the surfaces that you touch here gives you a nice sense of quality once you sit in the vehicle. The overall layout is extremely nice as well. You're greeted by a 10 and a quarter inch touchscreen display system that features Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Nice and responsive as you would imagine. Um, all touchscreens this day and age in vehicles are nice and responsive, lightning fast. So I really like that about this vehicle. Coming lower, three air conditioning vents, just a clean overall style when it comes to the dashboard layout. Coming lower, you do have physical buttons, hotkeys for your map, navigation, radio, media, and setup features as well, a volume knob. So this car still has physical buttons that work in tandem with the touchscreen. I say that in a lot of my reviews because a lot of the luxury manufacturers, <clears throat> Mercedes, are using a touchscreen and just forgetting about all the physical buttons, knobs, and keys. Yeah, the acceleration factor is awesome in this car, but the brakes are equally as impressive. That's really nice. So a neat feature that I noticed that this car has and some of the other cars we reviewed have as well is when you put on the turning signal, the car takes advantage of the camera system 
and uses the camera to show you what's in your blind spot and that's displayed nicely in your instrument cluster right behind the steering wheel. I really like that feature. I think that's an excellent safety feature that pretty much every car should have at this point. Steering wheel feels nice in my hands. It does feel a little thin. I wish it was just a little bit thicker. Thicker steering wheels tend to give you a nice sense of control over the car. I'm not saying that I don't have it in this one, but a thicker one would feel better. It's covered in nice black leather, perforated on the sides. Behind the steering wheel, of course, you do have shift paddles. They're a little plasticky. I do wish that they were cold to the touch to give you a nice sense of quality to go with this beautiful interior. Yeah, this car really moves. It does have a hint of turbo lag, I will say that. But overall, the handling feels really nice. And it doesn't sound too bad either. The seats overall, they're extremely, extremely nice. Again, covered in that leather and then the sense of comfort you get. You know, they're not those seats that make you feel like they're too small for the car, right? I'm 5'11 and I'm fairly comfortable in these seats. They do feature three levels of heating and cooling as well. And the seat ventilation I'm experiencing in this car is some of the best I've experienced in the game. They are cold to the touch. I have it on level three ventilation and they are just nice and cold like you would want them to be, especially, you know, during the warmer months, that is something you definitely want to take advantage of. Once you put the seats in sport mode, I noticed that the side bolsters, you know, they kind of wrap around you a little bit. So they kind of contract around your body, keeping you nice and snug and planted in the center of the seat during aggressive driving, which is really nice. Door panels. I like the style with the silver accents that contrast well against the black leather. I like the contrast stitching. Of course, you have controls for all four windows, but there is just a little bit of storage on the bottom of the door pockets. So I will make mention of that storage is a little tight down there. But overall, I think the handling of this car and the acceleration is just awesome. I really think it is incredible. You know, they've taken steps to make sure that these cars not only are fast, but they feel like they're worthy of the speed that they're capable of. You ever driven a car that's fast, but you feel like it shouldn't be able to go that fast? That's because the car wasn't built right or set up right. It doesn't give you a good sense of confidence. You know, Kia also incorporated a torque vectoring by braking system. So when you're driving aggressively in a turn, it will apply the brake on the rear inside wheel to keep the car aligned and keep it on the correct vector suited for that turn. So they kind of focused on handling as well to match the performance that this car is capable of. And that's something that I was able to tell right off the bat. I really do like the direction that Kia is going with their vehicles. So overall for 52,000, I think this is a good option, especially when going up against the competition, the German competition, you guys know, we've reviewed a lot of those cars and in the same segment, you could easily be looking at 60, maybe even $70,000 for the same options as well as that performance factor. So that's something to consider. And on top of that, again, that warranty, which is simply unbeatable in my opinion. I'm thoroughly impressed with this vehicle, especially the interior. You know, once they delivered this or said I was gonna be reviewing it, I wasn't expecting a black Napa leather interior in a Kia. Just think about that. A few years ago, who would have said that? Black Napa leather interior in a Kia. I'm used to saying that for vehicles such as the S-Class or something like that. So definitely a huge step in the right direction. And again, this is where Kia is heading. This is the car that showed us that they're heading in a new direction back in 2018. And as you can imagine, since this is the 2022 model, this has the new Kia badge. And to me, it looks like a KN, but I still like the way it looks. But overall, this is a great car. I strongly urge you guys to check this vehicle out if you're looking for a fun, affordable sports sedan that won't break the bank and something that you don't have to worry about um, not being covered by a warranty. So guys, check this out. Please let me know what you think about this one in the comment section. And until next time, I'm Ben Wayne, the automotive reviewer that YouTube deserves.
this thing just moves. <laughs> I'll catch you guys in the next one.